There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. Every Sunday, we invite you to join us in listening to a series of inspirational programs featuring Dr. Ernest Holmes, noted author and spiritual leader in This Thing Called Life. Now, it is my pleasure to present Dr. Ernest Holmes. Thank you, Bill. Friends, when you and I know our relationship to this thing called life, we shall lose all feeling of doubt and insecurity. And in their place, we shall find faith and love, and we shall learn how to live successfully. There is a key to this great change that can take place in our lives, a golden key that is available to all of us. It is available to you here and now. Did you ever ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of people? Am I afraid of circumstances or of insecurity? Most of our fears are based on some sense of uncertainty, something that makes us feel we are not quite safe. Could we remove all fear, there would come a new lightness to our step and a new song to our lips. We now know that fear and depression retard the circulation of the blood. This is a very familiar body-mind relationship. Fear not only takes the joy out of living, it reduces those who are dominated by it to a state that makes everything they do ineffective. Naturally, then, we would like to overcome fear. We wish to find some kind of medicine that will cure fear, or some kind of surgery that will remove it. So far, most of our methods have not been successful. Generally, our fears are based on a sense of insecurity or a feeling that we don't belong either to society or to the world in which we live, or to the thought that we are neither needed nor wanted. Did you ever watch someone past middle life who is retired from any activities and really doesn't know just what to do with himself? Have you noticed how he inwardly shrinks up and begins to feel there is no longer anything worthwhile in life? Then perhaps someone comes to him and says, But I need you in my business, or I need your help in some social activity. You have seen this same person given back to himself as he again begins to live usefully and creatively. How soon a new look comes into his eyes when the energy of fear which has been depressing him and his feeling of not being wanted which has been choking him, is removed? Or have you observed a person who is so afraid of life that he can't enter into the joy of living? The creative energy of his life is bottled up, and he responds either by a sense of inferiority and false submission, and acquires what has been called a doormat complex, or in order to compensate, he often becomes over-aggressive. Now, both of these feelings, which are called superiority and inferiority complexes, are based on one and the same fundamental mistake, which, if you analyze it, amounts to this. I am afraid of life. I lack confidence in living. Both of these attitudes of fear are built on the supposition that one is controlled by some power outside himself, a power which he must either submit to or destroy. We see this in individuals and we see it in nations. For the great enemy of man is fear. If then you are suffering from fear, perhaps the first and best thing for you to do is to examine yourself. See just what it is that you are afraid of. Are you afraid of life? Are you afraid of people? Do you fear for your future, and if so, why? It isn't the easiest thing in the world to ask yourself these questions 
and come to a simple, honest self-analysis. But the first thing to do in overcoming fear is to be willing to meet yourself face to face. For it is yourself that you are dealing with, more than it is people or circumstances or anything else. goes without saying that fear is the absence of faith, and the lack of faith is really a lack of confidence in life. You have complete faith that the law of gravity will hold you in place wherever you may be, and in this you have confidence in something greater than you are. You may call it a law of nature, but all laws of nature are laws of God. So when you have confidence in nature, you really are having confidence in the way that God's universe is being run. I remember a story about a little boy who was running a foot race. As he passed by the judge's stand, uh, the judge happened to notice that he seemed to be talking to himself. Well, the little boy won the race, and afterwards the judge said to him, You seem to be talking to yourself as you ran by. Just what were you saying? The boy replied, I was praying, sir. And just what were you saying in your prayer, asked the judge. The little boy answered, I was saying, God, you lift him up, and I'll put him down. Surely, this youngster reached out to something greater than he was. Perhaps he reached in, found something within himself greater than he appeared to be, and he connected up with something bigger than he was. He surrendered himself to it, but he did his part. He kept putting them down and trusted that the life within him would lift them up. So his little feet paddled along, because his fear was surrendered to faith through confidence in life. Are you afraid to surrender your fear to that which alone can overcome it? Confidence in a loving presence in the universe to which you belong as a person which is very close to you and to which you are very dear? Oh, yes, I know that some strong-minded person may say, Well, I happen to be sufficient unto myself. All right? The only trouble with this person is that he really isn't sufficient unto himself at all, and no one is. Can you make the food you eat digest by willing it to do so? Can you cause the rose to bloom by your concentration? Do you hypnotize nature when you plant a seed and reap a harvest? Of course you don't. You see, we are all rooted in a life which, through faith, and give to us a power that we have never dreamed of. And faith is a mental attitude in your own mind, closer to you than your breath. It is a way of thinking, and faith alone overcomes fear. Where then should you begin to exercise this faith? Should it be in yourself, or in something bigger than you are? The over-aggressive may say, it should be in myself. Funny part of it all is, he doesn't feel that way about other laws of nature. Rather, he takes this attitude. I can have faith in myself because first I have faith in nature. I can have faith in my ability to wire a house because I know that there is an electric energy. I know that I didn't make it, but I know it will flow through the wire and make the light possible. Now, your personality has a relationship to an invisible presence which is identical with this. Of course, you need to have faith in yourself. You must trust yourself. You must believe in yourself. You must rely on yourself. But just who are you, anyway? For you, too, belong to the universe in which your life is laid and a life which is the high gift of heaven. You didn't think it up. You didn't plan it out, and you didn't make it. And all that you and I can do is to use something that a power greater than we are is put into us. If your faith is in yourself alone, your reaction is very liable to be one which says you have to build up a terrific resistance to everything, that you have to beat everything down. 
You can no longer say, God, you lift them up, and I'll put them down. You live by a force, an energy, an intelligence, a power and a spirit greater than you are, but which you use. It is this thing called life in you. It is the divine spark in your imagination, the divine purpose in your will, the creator, creating through you. You don't have to blow them down or bowl them over. As Jesus taught so long ago, submit yourself to the greater power and it will operate for you. Then your faith will have power because it is hooked up with that which is power. You will still be yourself, but you will have opened up an avenue in yourself through which something bigger than you are can flow as a perennial stream from an inexhaustible source. Learn to believe in and trust this source. And for every fear you have, find a faith greater than that fear. Not an arrogant, willful faith, but rather the faith of a child placing its hand in its father's, knowing that all will be well. Don't think that this will be weakness on your part, quite the reverse. It will mark the beginning of a new strength, a new vitality, and a new courage. And gradually, as you trust this bigger something within you, which is forever one with God, you will find that you are not isolated, you are not left alone to battle through life. There is a presence and a power that will go before you and make your way straight and happy. Perfect love alone casts out fear, and faith through love alone brings lasting confidence. Don't be afraid of life. Learn to trust it. Don't feel separated from God. Learn to feel his presence in everything and in everyone. Don't wait. Begin now, today. For so far as you are concerned, the day of God's appointing comes on the morning of your acceptance. Many men and women have written Dr. Holmes expressing their gratitude for the spiritual help and understanding which has made it possible for them to conquer their individual fears. From Dr. Holmes' files, we have selected this letter from Mr. A.F. of Los Angeles. Thank you very much for what you have done to help me, he writes. I am happy to say the position which I wrote you about has materialized very nicely. I realize now that it was my own feeling of insecurity which was handicapping me. Again, thanks. What have you to say about this, Dr. Holmes? May I say, Bill, that I had nothing to do with helping Mr. A.F. of Los Angeles. God wishes to help all of us, and the divine law of good is available to everyone. He came to believe in this, and of course it worked for him. And please may I point to the fact that one person could not be closer to God than another, and that the laws of nature can have no favorites. You and I and everyone must share equally in them. I should indeed be happy to know that everyone listening to this broadcast believes this, and at once begins to act as though it were true, because it really is true. As I said earlier, there is a golden key to right living, and that key is prayer, affirmative prayer. For prayer is our direct line of communion with God. Through affirmative prayer, we learn to clear the mind of negative thoughts, of doubts and fears. And this we must do, if we are to become aware of the presence of God within and around us. Let us then take as our prayer for today's meditation this thought. Perfect love casts out fear. And let us join in affirming God's presence here and now. Let us shut every other thought out of the mind, all the distractions of the moment as we listen confidently, peacefully, and quietly. I know there is a power greater than I am. I know there is a love which casts out all fear. I know there is a faith, which can overcome obstruction. I am now entering into this love. 
I am now using this faith. I now have complete confidence in God, the living, loving Spirit. I believe that the Spirit within me, which is God, makes perfect and happy the way before me. I enter into conscious union. With everything that lives, I commune with the Spirit in all people and in all things. I feel an intimate relationship to the presence and the power which controls everything. I put my whole trust in God. I know that the Spirit will gently lead me and wisely counsel me. I know that the love which is around everything flows through me to everyone. And with it, there goes a confidence, a sense of joy and freedom, an enthusiasm for life, a zest for living. For all thy ways are ways of blessedness. And all thy paths are peace. There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it.